Hello and welcome to My Mom's Basement presented by Barstool Sports. It is Robbie Fox and Clem back for another week of nerd news. We've got a decent portion of nerd news for you this week. We've got some movie news. We've got some video game news, some rumors that got cleared up. Um, I think it's only appropriate that we start with the Superman news because yesterday, Leap Day, February 29th, was Superman's birthday. And just by coincidence, Superman Legacy, now retitled Superman, started shooting on Superman's birthday. James Gunn swears that this was a total accident. He didn't even realize that Leap Day was Superman's birthday till recently. Um, but they revealed the logo, which looks very Kingdom Come Superman. Um, and they also, like I said, renamed the movie. It's gone from Superman Legacy to now just Superman which you could say anything you want. To me, that's just a big balls move by James Gunn being like, this is fucking Superman. We're not throwing any taglines, any cheesy titles on it. This is the most definitive Superman we're getting since Christopher Reeve. So, yeah, I have two different thoughts on these two stories here. Very different in terms of how I feel about my, our boy, James Gunn. Our boy. He's, he's the basement's boy. He is the basement's boy, James Gunn. Yeah. One... I loved just going Superman. That is balls on the table. I'm fucking here to save the DCU. And if I don't, whatever, there's going to be another guy. But this is it. There's no, because it's always like a little, you said a little tagline, a little this, little that. It's like, nope. I should have just said, oh, uh, you know, I don't want to step on Christopher Reeve's toes. It's probably not the best analogy as I'm saying this out loud. Um, nonetheless, I don't want to step on the toes of the fans of the original movie, yada, yada. No, no. Let's just fucking forget everything that has ever happened in the DCU, and we're starting fresh right now. So this is Superman. It's not Superman this, Man of Steel that, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's fucking just Superman, period. Put a period in it so you know it's the end of the day. <laughs> fucking, like, that is it. Superman, period. So I'm very, I was very happy to hear that they did that. And it kind of like, every how many times have I said here on the, on the podcast, like, just hit the reset button and don't look back. Don't like you know, Harry Cavill this, or it's like, no, no, just disconnect from everything. So I love that. The leap year stuff and Superman's birthday, and it was just a coincidence. Come on, man. You had it fucking made in the shade to be like, we were waiting for the one in, let's see, 365 times four. That's a 12. That's another 14. About 15, one in 1500 chance in these four years that you could do, make this announcement, get the pictures leaked on Superman's birthday and be like, yeah, because we're fucking running this shit right. We knew that there was a one in a 15, whatever I just said, chance that this was going to happen. And I would have loved it. I would eat it all up. And all of us fucking, everyone who's been glazing James Gunn. Yeah, I'm going to start using the phrase the kids say these days. Very uh, adult phrase, by the way, if you think of if, yeah. if it is what I'm thinking about. Uh and just be like, yeah, we did it. But don't tell me like coincidence, this and that. That's just fucking lame. I thought that was lame, personally. I thought you should have The leaked pictures, by the way, fake, not real. Oh, fucking AI got us again, huh? Was that an AI? AI picture? got us again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If AI. you zoom in on the photographers on that picture, it looks very, yeah. James Gunn also came out and said that ain't real. Um, this is the logo, though. I'll put it on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Or that's Rumble. what I meant. I meant the logo that uh, that leaked. Yes. That's what I was talking. Okay. So okay. that's official. They were pictures of David Cornsweat or, you know, it was quote unquote David Cornsweat in the actual suit. Those were fake, but they actually got a lot of people. So I wanted to make that clear. We haven't seen the full suit. We don't know if he's going to be wearing undies. We don't know if he's going to have the bullet belt yet. We don't know if the logo is going to be on the cape. This is all the questions going through every comic book fan's mind i assume we'll see that soon though because they're gonna have to film some of this shit outdoors and you would rather put out an official look at the costume before it leaks you know yeah that that makes sense and like you said it, it is such a big it happens with all the big superheroes are they gonna have this they're gonna have that what's the batmobile gonna look like are they you know wolverine gonna have the suit all the iconic heroes and superman is kind of the, the boss of this now i have to ask you bob we're in the basement. The basement is very much known. When you're in the basement, it's the trust tree. We can say our true opinions here. You will not get any kind of backlash. And I need your honest opinion here. Is there any part of you as the diehard Batman fan that is kind of hoping that's... I'm not going to say it flops, but like... <laughs> 
if if I could tell you behind door one is a movie and they're going to say, holy shit, they made a movie better than The Dark Knight. And behind door two is like, eh, 8.1, pretty good. Uh, excuse me, ball scale. Eh, 4.1, eh, pretty good. Which would you choose as a fan of not only, like, for, we have the podcast, right? So a good movie is mm-hmm. good for the podcast, hypothetically speaking. Fan of cinema, you go to the movies. Jeff D'Lo likes you because you go to yep. the movies, keep the lights on there. Uh, but at the same time, diehard Batman guy, and I do feel like it more so than any other superheroes, the Batman fans versus Superman fans is like a rivalry that's honestly hasn't been one for years, but could yeah. be one if like both of them put out fucking great movies coming up and we're just like, holy shit, we have Batman and Superman. DC is back. James Gunn did it. Our fucking The Basement Boy has become The Basement Man. That's a good point. I remember I used to argue with a kid I went to school with, Bridges, and he was a huge Superman fan. And I'd be like, Batman would whoop his ass. He has whooped his ass. He's got a kryptonite brass knuckles. He's got kryptonite rings he could hit him with. He's got kryptonite bombs. He'd be like, no way. Superman lasers him right in the mouth doesn't see it coming he's done like we had these arguments daily i gotta say there would be part of me that would be killed by liking a movie more than the dark knight and having it be a superhero that's not my favorite superhero so there, like that door one you presented it would kill me inside to be like this is better than the dark knight i don't but like the the comic book fan the james gunn fan the dc fan in me like wants that you know, like wants a movie where i could be like holy fuck like a movie hasn't blown me away since the dark knight maybe infinity war came close but like if this one went oh it would have to be better than infinity war which would be like i can't even comprehend kicking off a universe could be better than infinity war and the dark knight and all that so yeah i'll take the 4.1 <laughs> you know what? And that's why I love you, Bob. And that's why everyone listening and watching loves you because you tell the truth. And so, four point one is a promising start to the universe. We'll take that. Yeah, it's like almost like if you almost can't have it be. In, you can't even compare Infinity War and Endgame to like any other movie because it's like an ensemble movie. It's wrapping up fucking decade worth of work. But like Dark Knight, I'm trying to think of like. What other, like, if it's better than, say, the original Iron Man, it gets better accolades than uh, Guardians, stuff like that, that are, you know, standalone-ish movies that are not, you know, have the entire universe essentially fighting. Yeah. And I'm going to have to say, though, Bob, I'm going to just steer into this here. And I hope this doesn't cause friction, but I think that our Cap versus Iron Man was a very, has been a very fun subplot. <laughs> I think I'm becoming a Superman guy. I'm putting oh, it down no. on the table right now. Oh, no. Superman's my guy. Clark Kent, I got fucking Lois Lane. You have Maggie Gyllenhaal. I got Lois Lane girl next door. <laughs> I got fucking, what's his name? Jimmy. Uh... <laughs> J- Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy Olsen. I got that little fucking ginger. Fu- he's a ginger. I think he's a ginger. Yeah. He's a little, this like, guy, you know, he, he's a him. Superman guy. I don't even know Jimmy Olsen. Just became, but you know what? Born. The born birth of a Superman guy was just happened live on the podcast. Here, Here's the good thing about this rivalry is it could be diffused with one word. Martha. So you got to say Martha. And then you remember, oh, our moms have the same name. We could stop fighting now. There you go. That's like the uh, that's like the safe word. It just like eases all the fucking <laughs> yeah. tension here. It's the, the nerd safe word. Why did you say that name? <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, all right, which Martha was better? It's like, well, my you know Superman's mom, Midwestern girl. She cut the sandwiches and little triangles. Listen, I'm the biggest Batman guy you're gonna find. Superman's Martha's better. Is she Superman, better? I don't know Kent. much about her. I'm a new Superman. L- listen, <laughs> yeah, like. Martha Wayne, a, a saint, you know, she had some mental issues. If you want to follow the the Batman mm. storyline and there's other some other storylines with it, she's part of the Arkham family and stuff. But like at the end of the day, super rich, like probably not super down to earth, married to a doctor, living in skyscrapers and shit. When you get Ma Kent, she's like the all American, like, you know. She's the mom you want, especially, I got to say, in the Zack Snyder movies, really good. I think Sally Field. Is that who plays her? Oh, Sally. F- I, I feel like she was in some of the something. Decent let me stuff. let me verify Sally that because Sally. I get Sally Field uh, mixed up, you know, with another been. actress. You know, who no, it wasn't been. Sally Field. It was Diane Lane. 
Diane Lane's a good one too. She's uh, like one of the infamous forever of smoke. She's just, like just stunning. She's 60 years old now, still just like an absolute beauty. You know, she couldn't, it wouldn't fit because she is much more New York, but like, I'm trying to think who they, do they have, they have they announced who Ma Kent will be? No, but I think Sally Fields should do it now. Sally, yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> Sally, I, I was going to say Marissa Tomei, but we already have her, obviously, as Dan yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff, and she is New York more so than Nebraska, Nebraska right? Um, Kansas. Kansas. This guy, he ain't a got, Superman I, guy. He ain't a Superman guy. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still getting my bearings. It's been a long time. Hey, I knew Midwest. I was fucking directionally correct. Do they board? I feel like they border each other. That's the same thing. It might, you know, uh, they might. I'm not as good at geography as I am Superman knowledge. If, I mean, if uh, our if our boy KB was listening, he'd be puking everywhere. And oh, they're fucking it's basically the same state. It's big, they're, they're right there. <laughs> Nebraska's right on top of Kansas. It's not a big deal. This this guy thinks deal. this guy thinks Superman works for the Daily Bugle. <laughs> <laughs> That's Clark. I I like the hardest thing about being a Superman guy, which I am, is the whole glasses thing. It's always just as like, come on, you know what? I disagree. I, I thought that my whole life. And then recently I've seen some people like in my normal life, friends, family, whatever, without glasses. And they look so different that I'm like, you know what? I think I'd get fooled by Clark Kent. You think you get fooled? Like, yeah. The, the, the only part, imagine like if, if say Clark Kent or Superman worked for Barstool and everyone's like, dude. Like, like, oh, hey, Clark, how's it going, dude? And Portnoy would be the only person to be like, dude, that's fucking Superman. <laughs> like, tell, that's not, a, it's a fake voice, right? That would be his kind of thing. He'd, yeah. always, he'd, he'd sniff out Clark Kent instantly. But yeah, the rest of us probably would. Because glasses do change. The first time I threw on glasses, they're like, where's Clem? Where did he go? I'm like, yeah, same fucking guy. All right, so I'm the Superman If anyone guy. at Barstool is Superman, a Kryptonian pretending to be one of us, it's got to be Mincy. Just got to be mints, you, you know, he does like the, you know, messed up hair and cross eyed. And then we think, oh, he's just bumbling all mints. And then he leaves here and it's like he ain't doing hogs for the cause. He's saving the planet. And he has backers. He has the two richest people in the company are backing him at different times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's crazy. He just felt like failing upwards isn't even what mints he does. And I honestly, when. This last thing with the, the, the combine, followed by the thousand dollar offer from his peaches. I thought we were going to see the death of Mincy, and somehow he's going to emerge stronger. He has, we're taping this Friday morning. We have the Clemmer versus Mincy challenge, and I feel yep. like, I, like they're if you're just going on Mincy, he's like the pitcher has a good season, bad season, good season, bad season. He's going to run like a four one forty. He's going to break <laughs> NFL records. I'm like, how the fuck did he do that? I don't know. I've been running guys. I've been doing a whole lot of running. I was going to say, when you were saying Kryptonian, I was going to say, I feel like Clemmer's a villain. And this kind of plays, this could play out perfectly in this combine here. We have our Kryptonian and our fucking super villain. And you can just see like a comic book guy who does the gargoyle pose, like our boy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, on to some video game news, some unfortunate video game news. EA has canceled the Star Wars Bounty Hunter first-person shooter game. EA laid off a bunch of employees, hundreds, I think. And in this game, some details we got, you were going to play as a Mandalorian, not Din Djarin, not the Mandalorian, but a Mandalorian, pursuing bounties across the galaxy, fast-paced jetpack combat. That sounds fucking awesome. Yep. Um, you battled various types of stormtroopers, ATSTs, AT-ATs. It was not an open-world game, which surprised me. I kind of pictured this being like a Red Dead Redemption type Mandalorian game, but apparently not. And it's confirmed that Jedi Survivor slash Fallen Order 3 is still in development. And a Knights of the Old Republic remake is also still in development. This is a bummer, though. Um, there was a game back in the day called Star Wars 1313. And they were like, it's about a secret bounty hunter in the depths of Coruscant. And I think it was revealed along the way that it was going to be about like a young Boba Fett. And there's even some leaked test footage from it that looked awesome. And like for my whole childhood, I was always thinking that game sounds so good. This game sounded like it was going to be that, you know, for the next yeah. generation, the next level of uh, consoles. Sucks. I think a Star Wars bounty hunter game, kind of like the one I described, like a Red Dead Redemption, but it's in the Star Wars universe, that would fucking fly off the shelves. Like, sell it to Rockstar. Let them do a rated yeah. R version of it. It might take them 
uh, 12 years to put it out, you know, but let's get them started on it now. Let them do a rated R Star Wars game where they're saying like, you fucking scruffy nerf herder. They throw an <laughs> F-bomb in there or something. Like that would be, that'd be everything we ever wanted. There was an old game called Star Wars Galaxies that was open world online. People loved it. I, it was like before my time. I never really got a chance to play it. Wait, what, what was the name of the, what was the title of that one? Galaxies. It was uh, like an I, online only game and you could go planet to planet. You could fit a bunch of people in an online server. I've watched plenty of videos on it on YouTube and I'm like, this seemed like the most fun game ever. I feel like I might have had that game. And it was like, it was till 2003. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I feel like the, like, it might have been choppy or something. Like, there, it just never yeah. like, hooked me in. But this was one of the games I said I kind of oversaturated myself with Star Wars games at some point, and I just cut bait with it. This sucks because, like you said, there's certain, like, sex of the S-E-C-T-S. -E sex yeah, of not, the Star not Wars. Sex. They're not yeah. talking the big capital S word. Um, there's certain sex of the Star Wars universe that can make a very cool video game and bounty hunting. Like, the fucking, the catalog is wide open. Go to any planet, do anything. You have to get this person on this fucking, in this star system. Boom. Done. Very cool. Pretty clean. It was EA, right? Yeah. EA, EA sucks. Let's be honest. I haven't, I haven't fucked with any of their loot crate. I don't know what they're, if they're still just fucking people over like they used to. But that's the one thing. It's like, it sucks. The layoffs obviously suck. But with a EA thing, it's not like if it was a Rockstar game, this would be you yeah. wearing black on the podcast. Devastating. Morning. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it sucks, but hopefully someone somewhere. I love this idea of just giving Rockstar licenses for all the big franchises. And they're like, listen, guys, the one thing is you have to come out with a game in 15 years. Just get a couple of people <laughs> yeah. to do it. And then we get a Marvel game. We get ourselves a Star Wars game. It could be some pretty cool shit along with. God, I, we actually know. You know what? I take it back. They're not getting shit until GTA Six comes out because I'm still yeah. Like, it's Dr. Dre T Tox in me. Until I see it on <laughs> my fucking TV, I'm not going to believe it's going to happen. So, uh, absolutely. We just got a report this week. They said it's entering the final stages of development. Like they made all their employees. They're they're making them come back in five days a week. Which I was like, now they're making them do that. We've been waiting because they've been taking fucking three day weekends. Come on. Yep. Yep. I also, I sent this to you uh, offline. It was just one of the deals I happened to see. Star Wars oh, yeah. Squadrons, no free ads, but it is um, available on Xbox One Series XS. I don't, I still don't know which Xbox is the new one, what's the old one. <laughs> and those are the same ones. I don't know. I just know Star Wars Squadrons from $40 to $2, either online. And then it says GameStop has it as well. If you're still a GameStop person, uh, let me see. Yeah, still $1.99. So, that, I mean, I got to get that. I haven't played it. It's a, just a dogfighting game. And I think it was mostly made for VR. So, like, oh. I think the PlayStation has a VR capability thing. Um, so you could be, like, in the cockpit and look around and see all the controls and shit like that. I think I might have bought this game, and I never um, – I just never played it. I played it, like, twice and just forgot about it. But, I mean, $2 it's not – dude, that's not even a slice of pizza. How crazy is that? Yeah, These $2 days, is – Like, it's cheese yeah. slice. Uh, I'm just looking here at Metacritic. Got a 79 in terms of the – All right, uh, that's not critic. bad. 5.6 on the user scale, which isn't great, but two bucks. I mean, fuck, just listen to the two bucks. Yeah. The music. You fly around for a bit. So anyone, exactly. any Xbox people out there, which one is the current Xbox? So I know the series X series X. Okay. Good to yeah. Know. Um, some more star Wars news, not really news as much as they were rumors that were shot down. Rumors started swirling this week that the Ray movie is going to be titled episode 10, a new beginning. So everyone is like, oh, fuck, here we go. Episode 10, the Skywalker saga is back. Lucasfilm denied these rumors faster than Han Solo made the Kessel run. It was <laughs> unbelievable how quick we got a statement from Lucasfilm calling that categorically incorrect. So they're like, this is unbelievably false. Please, everyone calm down. They confirmed that the working title for the movie is New Jedi Order. So that doesn't confirm that it's the final title. Obviously, Superman Legacy, we just saw, change their working title. But um, yeah, calm down, everybody. It's not episode 10. And I think this is smart. I think if you did episode 10, people go in with like much higher expectations of this is part of the definitive saga. If you just call it New Jedi Order and people go in thinking, oh, it's a little Rogue One level spinoff and then you blow us away all the more power to you. Maybe you can make an episode 10 after that, but you got to, got to prove yourself first. 
Yeah, it, it, it raises the expectations and it also like lowers them where I'm like, I'm like a little bit. Yeah, because there's this, a taste in your mouth. Yeah. You know what? The the It's not the Skywalker saga anymore. It's the Emperor saga. Like, I'm like, all right, so at some point, <laughs> the, Emperor is, the Emperor is the big bad and all this. He's going to come in. It yeah. is the, ready? Palpatine. Saga. No, still so wrong. Pal- 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 Palpatine. Palpatine. I, I thought I there said you Palpatine. Go. It's the Palpatine. You still hit like a pal- Palpal. I, it, that L slips in there. It slips yeah. in there on its own. It's crazy. Uh, it's so like I, Quaguan. You, I got Quaguan. <laughs> you got Palpatine. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm and you got Pal- a Superman from Nebraska. Yeah, I got a Superman. <laughs> hey, my, what if, like, what fucking... James Gunn can move him to Nebraska. No one's going to say. No, it, you right? can't. You can't move Superman out of Kansas. You can't do it. What if it's on the border? And it's like, so my like my my mailing address is one address, and but I'm in it, my schooling is a different town. So it's like maybe technically, no. Maybe is I'm there not a giving you Nebraska, Nebraska Superman? Is there a Nebraska Kansas, Kansas, Superman is cursed? <laughs> there's a Kansas City, Missouri, and a Kansas City, Kansas. If there's a Kansas City, Nebraska, we're moving to Kansas City, Nebraska. That's what <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Bob. And it's like, don't give Daisy Ridley like I gotta carry another one of these fucking like epic movies. Get me, get us out of this loop. This guy, you could actually make a case that like if this movie's good, the Skywalker saga is like weighing down the star wars overall franchise if you didn't like the prequels and the sequels and you just love the original yeah. trilogy and you're like well you did have rebel one well solo the thing is the, rebel the, one rogue one rogue one, rogue one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rogue one. you're in a different like you're in a multiverse today that is just <laughs> slightly off from ours <laughs> you're, you're just a little bit off on everything you're saying <laughs> i i was going out to get coffee uh, and then I was like, oh, shoot, I'm not going to have time to go back and do all this stuff. So I, I didn't have the second coffee of the day. I rarely do it. I know I need it, though. This this hammered home that I did need that second cup of coffee. So this is good to know. That you went, to, you went to Square Bucks to try to get coffee. <laughs> Stella Red. I went to Stella Red. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I just wanted to shout out the Bad Batch yet again. I know some people have asked for full recaps. I don't know if it's um, like a full recap week to week show for me. I'm watching it and really enjoying it. Like I was one of the people that kind of fell off during season two. I'm very glad that I picked it back up in season three. I think it's shaping up to be an amazing season. I think maybe I'll do something at the end of the season, like a, a, a little recap uh, of the or maybe mid season Um I'll do a mid season and a final thing, but the bad batch, very good. And it feels like it's obviously still a kid show, but it feels like they're aging it up a little bit with its audience. This is a bit of a darker season. feels like it has bigger stakes. We've got the emperor getting Papaltine in here is always great. You know, (laughs) now, Um, and would you say this is doing its job to what it, what the clone wars did for the prequels makes my God. Yeah. Better. Okay. Yes. I'm Season three, especially we're full on slight spoilers. I don't think this is a real spoiler. I think it'll just sell you on it. This is how the emperor got cloned. Like we're straight up doing metachlorians and M counts and we're trying to get the cloning numbers up and Nala say from Camino is back and it, it's really good. Now, Definitely do I, worth checking out. is there any part of the story that's very important that I have to play a game of Fortnite to get some of the answers? <laughs> Read the back of a cereal box, a shower cereal no. box to get another part. Everything's just there. Everything's in the show. It's wow. a crazy concept, but they put all the plot you need in the actual show. It's crazy. Okay. Oh, and this actually, I, I wanted to, to raise this point. Again, trust tree stuff here. We're in the basement. And the Bad Batch, actually, if I watched the Bad Batch, it would be another example of why I wouldn't do something like this. But for the first time in my life, I, I thought, would it really be so bad if I canceled Disney Plus for a little while? And how crazy is Ooh. that? It's like, if you lose someone like Robbie, you're that dead. kids. That's crazy. Now, I can't do that. So the only reason I would keep it, to be honest, my kids only watch Disney Plus for Bluey. And like, the thing is, they watch it. They love Bluey. So I yeah. can't do it just because of Bluey. But I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm like, eh, like they're just raising the prices every month. I'd probably just end up doing like maybe the ad version at some point. But I'm like, I'm not even at like it. The Disney Plus logo, I think of Secret Invasion right now. I should think of Loki season two, which is oh. great. But it's like I just have that bad taste in my mouth, and I just see it. And I'm just like, this is again me bringing that series back for the a hundredth straight podcast. Um, 
but it's just like they should take it off the the disney plus you know like <laughs> we're big advocates of like keep everything on there it's the vault we don't want you taking product up products off they should take that off though sell it to netflix too and like bomb netflix with it you basically throw them yeah. <laughs> in there. and someone sees it and just is like oh like it's the uh guy taking the headphones off me except yeah. he's like, <laughs> the across the room so i i was like you know what they're kind of losing me here because but I, I can't obviously do it we have the show we have enough stuff that'll come on disney plus and it's and like, hey th this month now x-men 97 and that is why I could never actually do it once X Men ninety seven comes back and just being able to have Endgame, Infinity War, yeah, and all the different Marvel Marvel projects at my fingertips. But it's like at the same point, I couldn't get X Men on there, the original like the, the movie yeah. that we watched, and I'm like, how the fuck? Like, so it just kind of like I, I was just like I, I worked myself into a tizzy, and I was just like, man, their, their new shit isn't even that good. The old stuff I've watched so many times and I was like, and they're just going to raise the price. I think it was, it's 140 for the year I pay. And it's really, I mean, when you break that 12 bucks a month or something, that's not bad, but it's like a principal thing. But I think I, I one, okay. One through five on the ball scale. I'm maybe like a 3.5 in terms of people that are going to be your Disney uh, plus consumers. I guess having the Simpsons is always nice. You're like 4.5. They lose Rob. I watch Star Wars trouble. a lot. Yeah, I yeah. rewatch Mando episodes, uh, the Clone Wars, Bad Batch, Rebels. Disney Plus is one of my go tos for sure. Even even Pixar movies, to be honest. Like to, if I'm working and I want to throw something on in the background, The Incredibles, Monster. Well, like Monster Inc. I can't really throw on in the background. That one will suck me in. I'll start crying. Um, but you know the the Pixar movies that don't make you cry, the few and far between that don't make you cry. Now, yeah, exactly. Now that you mention it, this did have like my this. I, I thought of this a couple times over the last week, and one of the times is when I heard they're making a Toy Story five, and they said it's gonna end. Yeah. It, they're gonna do it the perfect way to end the franchise, and I was like, "You fuckers did that with Toy Story you 3. Did it. And and they three, broke, yeah. And then I got mad. I got mad at Disney. So this was a thing at Disney. It wasn't as much so Disney Plus. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it was rooted in most or most so in Toy Story than Star Wars and Marvel than anything else. So I apologize for any of the uh, ricochet shots to the rant but i was in like a pretty angry place the other day all because of toy story 5 looking back not even toy story 5 toy story 4 is why I was yeah there. which I, I think is a good movie but it's just it doesn't hold a candle to three and the ending they had for three so it's like ah tough it it's like again i lived through this we'll do our sports analogy michael jordan and the wizards wasn't all bad he had some good fucking <laughs> yeah. moments when he pinned ron, ron mercer with the two-handed block it was incredible but it was not like they had the fucking Brian Russell push off shot against Utah. Perfect movie fucking ending. And then they're like, oh, let's just fucking run it back one more time here. Well, let me put you in a better mood. Thanks to our friends at game time. You there shouldn't have go. to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. You don't have to worry with game time because they are the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I've had great experiences using game time. It's very easy to use. Like they said, you can get tickets to absolutely anything. If you can find tickets for an event on another ticket site, you could find them on game time. And usually you can find them for much cheaper on game time. They actually guarantee that last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. It's easy to find and buy your tickets for any kind of event. And they're the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You could see the view from your seat before you buy it. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive and all in prices show your total upfront, which is huge. So, you know, you're not getting a great deal without hidden fees. Um, Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code MMB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code MMB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. A lot of good stuff coming up. Baseball obviously coming back. You'll get NBA and NHL playoffs in a few months. Um, regular season still available now and stuff. Comedy, uh, summer concerts, summer festivals, tons of great stuff with game time. I got to go back. I, I It's not uh, yet, but I got to go back to that, like Marvel Universe Live. I got to take the kids back now that they're a little older. We'll go on game time. And like you said the two biggest things, no hidden fees, not getting the you know checkout. And then you're like, wait, that's like triple the price of what the ticket just yeah. was. And being able to see where I am because it's like – you never know angles, different kind of stages, all that kind of stuff. You know how it is, different kind of events, different kind of setup. So, uh, yeah, shout out Game Time. 
All right, bunch of random stories here, starting with a Marvel one. Um, Ray Winstone, who played Drakov in Black Widow, the villain that was running the Red Room and everything like that. You know, she breaks her nose in front of him because of the smell thing. He says that being in Black Widow was, quote, soul destroying after he was asked to tone down his performance. He said they came to the set producers and said, you got to tone down this performance. He said he tried to quit his role before reshoots started, but couldn't due to contract obligations. He said, I'd end up in court. It's like being kicked in the balls. He described this as just the worst experience ever. I thought he was pretty good in the movie, but he honestly wasn't in a ton of the movie. I think that was one of the things we complained about yep. in, in that movie where we like could have been more of him, more of the villain, more of you hating him before you meet him. Um, but maybe they removed him because his performance was all wacky or something. I don't know. Or maybe they just didn't like him on set, so they tried to minimize his role. Sounds weird that he said it was soul destroying because they asked him to tone down his performance. Was he just going crazy? Was he speaking in a Pepe Le Pew voice? Like what was he doing? <laughs> I kind of like the I, I kind of like the thought of that. This, <laughs> this is just more of the I don't want to say dark times, but just one of those movies that was like I remember the villain and then uh, who was it? Uh, Taskmaster, right? Yeah, we had Taskmaster, but I'm like, oh, Taskmaster would be cool, and then kind of just fizzled out and. I think they killed the t I don't think they killed the t I was just bummed. They I kept her alive, but they turned her into a good person by the end. It was, yeah, they didn't handle her well. Yeah. So I kind of lump this. I'm going to take our boy Ray Winstone's rant and the soul crushing side of it. And we're just going to, you know, crumple it up. No disrespect to Ray, but we're going to like crumple it up. And we're just going to put it like in the garbage bin of the last, <laughs> you know, two or three years. All the bad shit from this phase. It's just one big pile of shit. It's not your fault, right? It's not yeah. your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I'll give my Robin Williams for you. <laughs> I, I, you almost, like, if anyone has a problem with any Marvel projects from the last couple of years, it's like, yeah, man, those are some dark days. It's like, if, you had a, if you've ever been on, like, a bender in your life and there's just a year or so that kind of don't remember what's going on it's like yeah we're just gonna forget you know 1996 or something like that if someone had a rough year crazy not me not me but just someone in general we're just gonna throw <laughs> that, that being out said though like even marvel's rough years the dark years are like better than dc's you know decent year like for a studio for a big franchise like marvel that produces as many movies as they have the stinkers, the ones that are just flat out bad, are very few and far between. So, like, they are the dark times, but they're not the darkest of times. Yes, there is light there. I Again, I compare this to I, – I, I always – I've been saying it for a while, and even going to James Gunn now, going to uh, D.C., it's like WWF and WCW, where it's like WWF, it was like no matter what they – everything they touched turned to gold. Their bads weren't really that bad. And then somehow, some way, WCW was able to turn it around, and then it made them both awesome. And I'm still praying that, like, we are in the beginning of that. That Superman reveal is, like, you know, the first time that you saw Scott Hall in, like, the WCW. Or something, you <laughs> yeah. know, like, this is the beginning of it, and I'm really hoping that's the case. So, but, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's The, the, the pile, like, the, the trash pile is, like, oh, that was that bad Marvel year. And then it's, like, out back, the flaming dumpster, that was DC's, you know, last decade or whatever. <laughs> So the next two stories, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Which one would you like first? I'm a bad news first kind of guy, Bob. I don't know. What are you before we get into it? I think bad news first, because then the good news, you could kind of get out of that rut that it's, you're about to be put thing. in. Yep. Um, Clem, this is sad. This is sad times. Oh, no, I don't like this. I, you're Nicole not going to kill Kidman, Juan again, are you? You're not going to kill no, Juan No, no, again, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just going to tell you the Nicole Kidman AMC ad has been retired. No. Um, yeah, you've seen it for the last time. Um, they started retiring it last night, but there's three new Nicole Kidman AMC ads that have been deployed to theaters. Um, they started debuting last night with Dune 2 previews. I'm going to see Dune 2 tonight as we record this. It's Friday, March 1st. Um, I can't wait. I'm so excited for this movie. Rewatch Dune this week. I'm all in on Dune 2, everyone's raving about it. Jeff Delo's coming in his pants. Ken Jack came up to me today. He said it's worth the hype. Goochman said worth the hype. So I'm almost as excited for a new Nicole Kidman ad as I am Dune 2. I actually, I'm going to go to the Nicole Kidman ad tonight, and then I'm going to go home. <laughs> and again, I, I, I made my promise to myself and to the listeners, I'm only going to watch Dune on an airplane screen. So I have yep. to wait, what, that's like two years before? I mean, no, airplanes <laughs> get them pretty quick now. I get, Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe a year. 
Yeah, I'd say like the Super Bowl. If we go, if I fly to New Orleans for the dozen again for another Super Bowl uh, tournament, that is what I will see, dude. So I'll be interested to hear your review, and I'll be seeing it then. I yeah, I might funny. see if Jeff wants to hop in the basement and and do like a Dune podcast with me, just to give him a platform to gush about Dune. Yeah, it's gonna have to be like NSFW though, because we don't know what. Yeah, kind of he's gonna be taking old. a sandworm out for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I, and I've seen the reviews. I've seen the tweets from everybody. Um, I saw Jeff blogged about it, how it's just like incredible. I have to see it on the biggest screen possible, which again, my airplane flight is going to thumb the nose <laughs> at all those requests. Like they didn't feel this way about Doom 1, did they? No. I mean, Jeff okay. did, but like not yeah, everyone okay. else did. Jeff was like, this is, you know, the greatest movie ever, but he even scored this higher than Doom 1. I went back and looked at what he scored Doom 1. He scored that in 96. This is a 98. So it ain't Oppenheimer, which was 100. But it's yeah, a 98. Because, like, I I saw Dune, again, on an airplane. Uh, I don't really remember what happened. Like, I haven't. I, I, remember, I remember, like, the big things. But I'm just, like, I don't That's know how. That's why I rewatched it this week. I was in the same, same place. And I, I felt like I liked it, the first one. But I didn't love it. Mm -hmm. And then I rewatched it and I was like, maybe I do love it. Like the rewatch actually really helped. Cause there's a lot going on and I'm, you know, yeah. I, I'm sure if you read the book, which, you know, sounds like was an absolute just monster back in the day. Everyone's like, this is going to be incredible. If someone could harness all this into a movie. And I was watching my guy heavy spoilers. He did. I watched his breakdown even of Dune one to be re get ready for Dune two. And I'm just like, I'm still just overwhelmed by all this shit, man. And how the TVs and there's fucking sand. Zendaya has blue eyes. What the fuck's going on? Then I have Zendaya in a C3PO outfit in my head. There's yeah. a lot of things that I'm battling. So I'm, I'm but I want to love it. So I'm excited for June 2. I'm excited myself. Uh, and I can't wait to hear the, the Bob Fox is going to be like, you're the meter I can go off of here. Cause I think Jeff is, he's a Dune guy. He's just a Dune he's guy. He's a Dune guy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. It's like um, we, it's like the opposite of like Frank with the Mets. It's like if you hear yeah, about yeah. how this guy is the worst player of all time, and then it's like, oh, Frank, I looked at his baseball card. He batted like three ten last year and had forty five home runs. He's the fucking worst. He's never gonna win a World Series. So uh, Jeff is the anti Frank for the dude, which is like the nicest thing I think I could say to someone's fandom. Basically. Yeah. And Dave is also a big Dune guy. Dave Portnoy, our boss, he came up to me and Jeff after seeing Dune for the first time, and I still crack up thinking about it. He was like, "Do you guys know?" Star Wars kind of ripped off Dune. And we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we knew that. But he loves Dune. He told Jeff recently, I think at the Super Bowl, Jeff said they were just watching the Super Bowl. They a Dune commercial came on, and Dave turned to him and he was like, That might be a dress up on opening night movie. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure he'll be seeing it probably this weekend. Maybe he'll bring Miss Peaches to the theater. Dune boys? <laughs> Do the Dune Boys come out? Of Dune that? Boys. <laughs> we all have that thing them. that goes into our nose, the the Fremen thing. <laughs> Um, all right. So the good news, um, wasn't even the three new Nicole Kidman ads. I have even better news oh, for wow. us I, as, as basement boys. I thought that was the good news. That's a double no, good. This is why you get the bad news out news. of the way. Cause if there's some good news with the bad news, then you get the good news on top. Even though it didn't perform the way that the studio anticipated teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem 2 will be happening it will be released in theaters october 9th 2026 so we still got a ways to go until then but i believe there's going to be a tv show on nickelodeon to bridge the gap between movies i was worried about this because we heard like oh yeah it didn't really do what they anticipated box office wise so i was like fuck i want a sequel out of this i want them to get their secret of the used moment and I was worried we weren't going to, but here we got it confirmed. I think it's it's a Paramount that confirmed it. I am like, I have two feelings. I have the feeling of like happiness that this is coming because again, anyone who's listened to this or I, I basically like started a grassroots campaign on Twitter begging people to go <laughs> for a movie I have yeah. nothing to do with. At the same point, like I just hate hearing despite the studio being disappointed. So it's like, ah, just... They don't. I, I I want to make a franchise out of this. I want to have a new mutant mayhem kind of thing every three or so years with the creative people in place. But I feel like now it's like kind of got to go, got to go all in here, got to nail this. Uh, they're going to be given notes, which never is good for a movie. Yeah. So I'm kind of worried about but it. Pro, but I, you listed a lot of cons, but pro, Shredder. Pro Shredder, yes, very, <laughs> pro. very, very, yeah. very, 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 very pro. I. 
turned that on last week when my kids were off from school. Oh, really? And I was like, and they just like, I don't want to watch this right now. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. This is just my way. I do this. This is a good thing for parents. Turn a movie on. You want them to watch. They're going to watch it after like 10 minutes. And yeah. all of us were just like locked in. That movie is so fucking fun. It's so good. There is, I will say, from the time he becomes like a monster till the like, they, they win it. They, like right before them when they go to, I think it's like the Staten Island Zoo. I don't love that part. Everything else is fucking tense. <laughs> it's such a yeah. good goddamn movie. So, Bob... You know what? Like that—that that was the best case bad news, good news scenario I could have. I have the three Nicole Kidmans coming back. I feel like you're gonna have to find a like someone's gonna find a way to get that original Nicole Kidman either on there or like into your streaming. Like you turn on Netflix, you turn on movie, <laughs> yeah. and that's gonna pop up. Like like the streaming the streaming companies are gonna be in a war to get the Nicole Kidman a- AMC ad as a little. They're gonna put it out on on the Criterion collection. You're gonna be able to get like a DVD <laughs> bonus features and all that shit. <laughs> All right, so the the final news item, I got to admit, Clem, I'm pissed off again. I have a rant compared. I'm real upset about this. I texted the group chat about it, and I'm I'm the only person that's pissed off about this, apparently. They're remaking The Crow, okay? And when I heard they're remaking The Crow, I wasn't stoked about it. I really like The Crow, 90s cult classic movie starring Brandon Lee. If you haven't seen it, I understand. It's not like the most classic movie of all time. It's also not the best movie of all time. It's a decent movie with an amazing, perfect vibe. Like it puts you in that 90s, almost Tim Burton-y aesthetic. It nails the aesthetic and look of everything, particularly Eric Draven, the crow himself. Brandon Lee looks so fucking cool in that movie as the crow that Sting based the next 30 years of his career off the guy. He just started immediately. Did the they? I think it was Kevin Ash and Scott Hall gave him the idea. They were like, the crow is sick. Why don't you just be the crow? He had birds. He had crows. He was in the rafters. He was being brooding. The crow is one of the all-time movie character looks for me, comic book character looks for me, based off a graphic novel. They announced they're remaking it. I'm like, that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> then they announced the weirdo Skarsgård brother, Bill, is going to play him. And I was like, all right. He played Pennywise and It. He's a fucking weird, lanky guy, weird eyes. I was like, that kind of seems like it could work. He's the perfect fit. If you're going to recast the crow, Eric Draven, all right, I'll give him a shot. And then they put out pictures of Eric Draven, Bill Skarsgård, in the new Crow movie. And he looks like a SoundCloud rapper. He doesn't look anything like the Crow. He has short hair. He's got, he, he looks like almost the Joker. I know the Crow has kind of like clown paint, but he looks like the Florida Joker that's trying to sue <laughs> GTA 6 for putting him in the game. He looks like Jared Leto's Joker with the damage tattoos on his face. He's got eyebrow tattoos. He looks like Lil Xan. This is so unbelievably beyond my worst dreams. I was stunned. I'm out on this movie. I'm not seeing The Crow with Bill Skarsgård and FKA Twigs. Uh, I'm out about everything that has to do with it. I can't believe how much this was botched just from the pictures alone. And listen, when I saw, I remember like it, like it was yesterday, the first picture of Jared Leto's Joker coming out. He's like this. Ah, He's got a damage tattoo on his head. I was at a Ranger game when I saw it. And I, I was with my cousin, Kenny. I looked at it with him. Shout out, Kenny. I was like, oh, my Shout God. I was like, this is not great. But you know what? I'm going to give it a shot. Maybe the Joker in this new age has tattoos. Fool me once. Shame on you. <laughs> fool me twice. Shame on me. I'm not letting you fool me twice with the fucking Jared Leto Joker and the damage tattoos. Out on the crow. Okay. First of all, what was Kenny thought? What were Kenny's thoughts on the original Joker when he saw it? Yeah, I, I don't even think he cared. I think he was just watching a Ranger game. <laughs> I think like, he was dude, like, "All right, it looks fine." Got a Ranger game on right now, yeah. Bob. Come on, what are we <laughs> talking about? Like a goddamn nerdy cousin here, not just fuck talking about comic yeah. books. I feel for you, dude. You were fired up about it. I need you to tell him to knock it off. Tell him to knock it off because that's what. Knock it off. <laughs> knock it off. Yeah, man, I'm, this is one of those things where it's like your boy is going through it. I have, I haven't even seen the original Crow. The original Crow was a fucking like huge deal. I mean, when they were started filming yeah. it, then obviously he dies, and it was like fucking just like eerie. Yeah, it was just like a, a wack- creepy vibe around the whole movie, obviously yeah. because of what happened. Yeah, but it works so well. Like it's uh, again, it's one of those movies where I can't recommend it and be like, it's the fucking best movie ever. You're gonna love it. 
it's just like me and my brother love it. My brother watches it, I think, like every Halloween. It's like a good Halloween movie. So wait for October to come around if you just want a spooky 90s vibe. It's such a 90s movie. The Crow is a great one. My wife loves Tim Burton, and we love the 90s in general. So I feel like she she would like it. I might have to check it out based on this. Now, what if – I'm okay, don't bite my head off on this, but I'm just trying to help you out here. What if, like, so if it has the 90s vibe, which is a very distinct vibe, which, again, the, the Sting thing, great point. Let's be honest. Like, the 2020s, kind of like it's like a lost – it just feels like a lost world we're in right now. Everyone's kind of segmented in their own little world. It just feels like we're, we've done made copies on copies on copies, Xeroxes on Xeroxes of other stuff, and it just comes out maybe in the music and pop culture – and maybe this movie is just a like reflection of that, where the '90s were no. so fucking pure. You're no. not going to do it, huh? Yeah. And don't remake the Crow. It's not meant for this era. <sighs> wow, that was the dad voice came back out there. He yelled no. at me, but like I was just trying. But hey, fair. Um, listen, when your boy is going through stuff, you know when you just stop and you just say, "All right, we're not going to go through." <laughs> so I'm not even going to make. I, I don't fucking want to. I haven't seen the original. I don't give a fuck about this. Fuck this new Crow. I'm not going to watch it. I'm a Superman Thank guy. You, I'm just going to watch Superman. <laughs> Thank you, Clem. We're going to Nebraska. We're going to see where Superman landed. <laughs> Happy birthday, Superman. Leap year. Fuck the crow. <laughs> Fuck the crow. Fuck the crow. But go I watch the original. If you could go find it on streaming somewhere, you know, uh, that that's my recommendation to the basement boys and girls this week is check it out. I hope it's on Disney Plus so that I have a reason. <laughs> <laughs> no way it's on Disney Plus. <laughs> it's probably uh, streaming somewhere. Though. Prime video. You got to. You got to. All right. Oh. Paramount Plus, Paramount Plus, you can get it. Or there you go. Amazon is such a tease because it's like, yeah, you could buy it for four dollars. Yeah, no. Like, no, buddy, that's not what streaming is. That's not how we work. Yeah. In this day and age. All right, that was the basement for this week. Do we have a hashtag that the people could use? We talked mm. Bad Batch. We talked Star Wars, Mando, Superman. Uh, something about Nebraska. Super, super, or um, what? What was our uh, Rebel One? Hashtag rebel one. Hashtag rebel one. There we go. My, my shitty brain. That that's basically the <laughs> hashtag. So rebel one. That's that's goddamn it. That's that when you buy it at a at a bootleg at, at the Meadowlands flea market. <laughs> that's what it says on the cover. <laughs> we have Star. We have Rogue One at home. Definitely, we have Rogue One at home. God damn it. Also, if you've made it to the end of this podcast, just a tease for next week. I believe Monday this will be dropping. As long as I get the file sent to me. Um, I interviewed David Desmalchin again, our friend from The Suicide Squad, The Dark Knight. He played Polka Dot Man in Suicide Squad. Um, the Dark Knight, he plays that officer, that Joker kidnaps and everything. He's kind of like a henchman, Joker henchman. Um, he's in a ton of great shit, though. Prisoners, Dune, Blade Runner 2049. He's in a new movie called Late Night with the Devil. I interviewed him about that yesterday, and it was awesome. He's a great guy. He remembered me from last time. He remembered the basement. So we always appreciate David Desmalch and coming and chopping it up about movies. So look out for that on Monday. And uh, yeah, anything else, Clem? No, I like that dude, man. He just has that look about it. he. I feel like he is one of those guys. He's also in the like in the Dark Knight, the guy who uh, in the beginning with the bank robbery. You're just like, I just like that guy. You know, he just has yeah, that yeah, yeah. The guy from Heat you're talking about. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and like this is another one of those guys. And there's there's a there's a th I mean, in a like. Killian Murphy's like a, a juiced up version of that. He's like a fucking A-lister now. Yeah. But like, you'd always see him. You're like, I just like that guy. And um, the Mr. Robot guy. Like, they all, they're a little different, little strange white guys, let's be honest. And it's just <laughs> yeah. like, so uh, this dude, he's a friend of the base. He's a friend of mine for sure. So check it out. Uh, Monday, you said, hopefully? Monday, yeah, hopefully. they. It's like a, it was a screener interview so like they have the zoom link so they got to send me the the download of it but yeah it is what it is i think they'll send it to me this weekend fuck the the name of the what's it called um the Zack snyder uh star wars ripoff wasn't rebel one is it i don't have no rebel that. moon that was rebel moon fuck that's why i was probably close like, enough you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right that was the basement for this week we will talk to you next week i'm getting a second coffee next week even if i don't need it i don't care <laughs>